Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Right now, we're checking in with the chairs of Connecticut's political parties. Nancy DiNardo, chair of the Connecticut Democrats, and Ben Proto, chair of the Connecticut GOP. Thank you both so much for being with us this morning. Good to be with yes, you, Emma. Our pleasure. So we're about halfway through the legislative session right now. Let's do a little check-in. What were each of your party's priorities heading into this session? Nancy, we'll start with you, and then we'll head to Ben. Okay. Well, obviously, um, tax cuts and you know, balancing the budget are very important. And um, as you know, last year, we had the biggest tax cuts ever in our state. It was $660 million, and that was for car tax, uh, property taxes and child tax. And uh, they're looking now to do it again this year at $500 million, uh, primarily for um, the middle class and the working class. So I, I would say, obviously, um, the taxes. But And I'm going to speak for Ben for the moment, but I think our biggest priority is having the primary moved. Although I shouldn't speak for him. I'll let Ben make that determination. But I think it's important that we move our primaries up so for the presidential primaries. And Ben, what about you? Um, I think our, our priorities are making Connecticut more affordable, uh, providing uh, tax relief, real tax relief for the people of Connecticut. You know, um, Nancy talks about the proposed tax cuts of Democrats when, in fact, they've actually proposed some interesting new tax increases and actually proposed uh, removing from the legislature their ability to raise taxes and give it to the commissioner of deep to increase taxes. Um, also to uh, provide uh, continued local control of land use decisions and housing decisions uh, and parental rights and, and, and their uh, parents' ability to understand what's going on in their school system. Uh, but I agree with Nancy. Uh, Nancy and I uh, spoke together uh, about two weeks ago to the legislature to move the presidential primary. It's an important piece of legislation, I think, for both the Democrats and the Republicans to move our presidential primary up. And I know it doesn't sound like a very sexy bill, uh, but I think it's tremendously important for the political landscape in Connecticut. So Nancy and I, I think, can you know, find something we agree on <laughs> <laughs> uh, that we should do to uh, actually, I think, uh, uh, improve uh, Connecticut's political climate and uh, allow Connecticut voters to have more say in who our nominees are going to be at the presidential level. Absolutely. And I do want to talk about that uh, <clears throat> presidential primary push. But before we get to that, uh, in regards to the legislative session, you talked about some of those priorities. Now that we're halfway through, what have been the highlights or the most important measures you think are advancing so far. We'll start with Ben on this one and then head to Nancy. Um, I think, you know, there's, it's probably less about the bills that are advancing and the bills that have been killed. Um, you know, things like allowing 12 to 17 year olds to get vaccines without parental notification or consent, allowing illegal aliens to vote in our elections. Uh, some of the, uh, the mansion tax that, uh, you know, Senator Looney had proposed has been killed. Um, uh, things along those lines. I, I think, you know, keeping Connecticut affordable when uh, so many Democrats want to make Connecticut more unaffordable uh, has been the early part of this session. I think, you know, the committees have now finished up their work for the most part and will now be getting into more floor votes uh, where we'll actually see legislation begin to change from what people testified on to what's actually presented. Right, we're kind of at that point. So, Nancy, for you, is there anything you feel like been has been most important that's advanced so far? Um, nothing in particular, again, like Ben has said, but I do think, you know, obviously balancing the budget, but uh, funding all the necessary programs that have been put in place in the last two years uh, with the uh, governor and the legislature. And again, I want to go back to the fact that in two years, it'll be over a billion dollars that uh, the governor and the Democrats have proposed in tax cuts. And that's pretty significant, And as well as providing money for programs that have been instituted in, um, and developed. So I, I think those are still the most important things from my perspective. We have this rainy day fund, a big budget surplus. I'll, I'll 
take this to you, Nancy, and then go over to Ben, but a lot of people are trying to get a piece of this and spend some of this money with this budget surplus, and there's money in the rainy day fund. So, Nancy, is there anything that you think is the most important initiative or what money should most be going toward right now? Um, again, it's funding the uh, programs that we currently have and, uh, making, and making sure that they're adequately funded so that the programs uh, can be effective and um, allowing people, you know, the opportunity with the tax cuts that they will be able to have more money. And ben, do you, do you think there's anything that, oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, were you still? No, no, that's right. No, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off, but Ben, is there anything in your opinion that you think sh is the most important to have money go towards or anything you think isn't being funded enough? I think the most important thing we could take the huge amount in the rainy day fund uh, and spend it on is to give it back to taxpayers who actually put it there, and it's their money. Uh, uh, we should have a savings account. We should have a rainy day account. Uh, but at some point, when we're putting that much money into our rainy day fund, that's just an indication of how overtaxed we are in Connecticut. And at some point, the taxpayer should get that money back. And you know, Emma, we're coming up on uh, April 18th, which is tax day uh, in the Northeast. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I know the Democrats' uh, budget from last year has a substantial amount of revenue coming in from capital gains tax. Uh, and, but we also know that over the last year, the market has tanked badly. And I think they're going to end up short on what they projected for capital gain revenues. And that's going to be interesting to see how they're going to handle that as they move forward. I, I, I think they're can be upwards of a couple of billion dollars that uh, the state of Connecticut does not collect because of the collapse of the market over the last year. But at the end of the day, when we start looking at the rainy day fund and where it came from, it came from you and I and everybody who's watching this show when we pay our taxes. At some point, we should get some of that back. Well, I want to shift now back to what we brought up before, that presidential primary move you both mentioned. This is something you found a common ground on, and we're about a year out from what could be the new presidential primary election date here in Connecticut, truly bipartisan measure to move up that date from the last Tuesday to the first Tuesday in April. As you mentioned, Ben and Nancy, both of you testifying together in support of this. So we'll start with Nancy. Why is this so important to you? Well, it's important to me um, to give voters in Connecticut a chance to be part of the actual picking of a, a presidential candidate. By having it at the end of April, most of the candidates who are, are out of the race, you only have a few still in. And I think uh, we should, you know, have a stronger voice in that. Plus, it also brings the candidates here, and it brings more uh, spending to our state when the candidates come in and they buy ads on our TVs and everything. So I think overall it works out well for um, Connecticut residents and voters. And you mentioned multiple benefits for uh, Connecticut and for the state. Ben, what about you? Uh, you know, Nancy's absolutely right on this. And, and when we when we testified to the GAE committee, we, we really um, I think we're, we're united in that. When, when you look at where we were at one point, at one point, our primary was held in March in the early 2000s, uh, and then it got moved to the end of April. And we can look back, you know, particularly at 2016. Uh, by the time our primary came around, Donald Trump was the presumptive nominee on our side, and Hillary Clinton was the presumptive nominee on the Democratic side. It was an open election, you know, it was an open seat. There was no incumbent president. And our voters on both sides really didn't have an opportunity to let the, the parties know what they thought uh, or who they thought should be the candidate. As we do this and we move it forward, as Nancy said, it allows our voters, and this year it'll probably be on our side, on the Republican side, uh, depending on you know what President Biden chooses to do. Uh, but as we move forward, it provides our voters an opportunity to have more of a voice in who their nominee is going to be. It provides Connecticut with an opportunity to have more influence. Uh, it also, as Nancy said, I think tremendously important, given our location between New York and Boston, is a, is a tremendously important market for the candidates to come and spend money, not only on uh, television ads and, and whatnot, but when they come here to do events, the hospitality industry benefits from it. Uh, and as we all know in Connecticut, and Nancy and I know all too well, uh, we are not tax-exempt organizations and campaigns are not tax-exempt organizations. So everything we buy, we pay sales tax on. We have to pay all the room taxes, things along those lines. So it's a benefit to Connecticut. 
in that regard. It's a benefit to our economy and it's a benefit to our voters. This is a win-win-win for everybody. Yeah, a lot of potential benefits there. And we're talking about the 2024 race, already looking ahead to possible candidates. And, and Ben, you brought up former President Donald Trump. Now, we saw some historic and unprecedented events this week with the former president, both a current candidate and arrested on Tuesday, defending himself in criminal court. He has been a leader in your party, Ben. Obviously, what are your thoughts about what happened this week and his candidacy moving forward? Well, I, I, you know, I, I had uh, spoken about it, Emma, you and I talked about it uh, earlier uh, when it happened. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, the concern I have with it is that the district attorney in New York, uh, Alvin Bragg, is utilizing his uh, power in the justice system to uh, go after political enemies. And that's always a problem when we see that happen. Uh, when we have the previous district attorney who refused to bring these charges, we have the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, the most powerful U.S. attorney in the country, refusing to do this. The Federal Election Commission saying they don't see an issue here. Uh, this is an attempt to utilize the justice system to silence people. And at the end of the day, the district attorney's job is to prosecute crimes that actually happen, not to try, try to find crimes and then uh, bootstrap up to to go after people they don't like. So, you know, we've used the words of weaponization of the justice system. And look, no one is above the law, uh, and anyone uh, who uh, violates the law should be uh, should be brought to justice on that. But it's not the justice system's to, to, uh, role to go out and try to find a crime that it can charge somebody with in an attempt to shut down a political opponent that they don't particularly like. Well, and I want to get uh, Nancy's perspective in here as well in the last couple minutes. Your party has come out and asked the GOP to rebuke Trump in some instances. What's been the Democrats' reaction to this, and specifically here locally in Connecticut? Well, you know, this is where Ben and I totally disagree. I mean, uh, Donald Trump has broken the law, and he is not, even though he thinks he is, um, he is not above the law, and he does have to uh, go to court and you know, make a case for himself. And it's very clear. I mean, they had 34 different counts where uh, of him breaking the law. And this wasn't done just by, you know, a prosecutor. This was done by a grand jury that did uh, reviewed facts and interviewed people. And this is what they came upon. So it's not uh, political from that perspective, although, you know, Republicans do want to say it's the, just the Democrats doing this. He broke the law, and he's not above the law. And we only have a, a little bit of time left, but, Ben, really quickly, how do you think this impacts the Connecticut GOP moving forward, especially into the primary, if at all? I, I don't know that it has a huge impact on the Connecticut Republican Party. Uh, you know, we're coming up into the municipal cycle this year, uh, and we'll move forward into next year as well. I think at the end of the day, um, it's... You know, the, the, the Connecticut Republican Party, much like the Democrats and the Connecticut Democrats, are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, we'll have a primary in April, uh, hopefully uh, April 2nd uh, in 2024, not April 30th in 2024. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll move forward on that. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, there will be other candidates who will be out there uh, and they will be uh, talking to our voters. Uh, one of them is coming uh, to Connecticut with us at the end of May. Nikki Haley is uh, speaking at our annual dinner. Uh, I suspect that we will see other candidates here as well. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, I, I think one of the things that Alvin Bragg and the Democrats haven't realized is they may become the uh, single biggest contributor to uh, Donald Trump's campaign and his possible reelection uh, in what they're doing. Uh, and, and so as we move forward, uh, we're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to run our party. We're going to run our candidates. 2024 for us is about the congressional races in the state house and state senate. Uh, and the presidential campaign is a national campaign, uh, and I think that will take care of itself. Yep, and definitely interesting to see how this plays out. And I'm sure I'll be speaking with you both more again before the primary. And as you said, potentially an earlier primary date. We'll see what happens there. But thank you both again so much for being with me today. Our pleasure. Well, that does it for us on Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the free Fox 61 News app and watch the Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61 or streaming on Fox 61+. Plus. Have a great rest of your morning.